Right, well here's the next video. If you've not watched any of the other videos, I suggest you go back and watch them. Watch them all. They can be, I know they're quite long, but watch them. This is all to do with my family court hearing and my separation, etc, etc. I suggest that you go back and watch them. Watch everything and, and take it in and follow what's happening. Because this is not just happening to me. This is happening to, it's even happening to somebody on my street. Um, so I suggest that you watch them, learn from them, and do exactly what I'm doing to clear your name. And you, if you've watched the other ones, go back and watch them. You'll understand what I'm saying. So for, to go back, I've done a freedom of information, etc., on me and on my children. Now, my ex-partner has lied her ass off. My family has supported her and disowned me. Shame on you. You know what I think of you. You, you. When all this information's out there, you're going to look absolutely fucking stupid, right? Because everything that I've said from day one is the fucking truth, and I'm swearing at you, because you are absolutely pathetic believing what she said with no factual evidence. And you know what all that's about. So let's deal with this. But before I deal with this, I would like to just warn people, right, that some of the things that I am going to tell you on this video are quite emotional, they are quite distressing, they are quite disturbing, and I suggest if you are that sort of person, including my family, and you want to know the facts, right, and the truth, and this is only one section of what I've got, it's spread all over the front room, she's kicked it all over the room, right, then I suggest you don't watch this. If you want the truth, and you want the facts, and you want to see me being innocent for this, then I suggest you watch this, right? If you want more, come to my house and read it. This is not lies. This is not anything that I've said. This has nothing to do with me. All these statements is what been put on these statements. Take aside what I've put on, this, the court ones. Take it all aside. This is the children tonight. This is my children grandchildren cousins brothers sisters to my family that's disowned me and disowned my oldest boy and causing us trouble and his ex-partner causing us trouble shame on the lot of you you want to know the truth here's the truth facts if i say one thing that's a lie on any of these forms get me in court put me in fucking court lie over me Exactly the same as what I'm doing to the, the school where she works. Because at the end of this, there will be an email sent to them stating what's going to happen with them. I will be taking that headmistress to court, and I know you watch this. I'm coming for you. As soon as I get the police report, you're fucked. You're fucked. Because I'm going to prove that you've lied and took sides. And I'm going to expose your trust for defending liars in your school and this is a class one liar a teaching assistant in your school who has lied and lied in court on oath etc just lies and you've even put on here that she's lied so let's go four children we're talking about four i'm not even going to speak about the oldest girl because apparently she's been told that i'm not her father Although it's been said that she deems me as her father and she's missing me and her mental state is uh, not in a great position. But I'm sure none of you know about that. I know about that because that's all over this, this paperwork. I'm going to start with the youngest one. And this is a boy who's four or five years old now. He's good, I mean, I'm, I'm saying four or five because this is a period that's been going over a year. And he's been spoken to by teachers. And he's been spoken to by social services. And at no point has he said one thing about me, bad about me. None of them are. Not one. And I've got it on black and white here that they said I've never, ever hit him. I have never, ever done that. I talk loud because I'm deaf. I can prove on my medical records that I am deaf. So when people's around me and go shout, I do not shout. I hear myself speaking. You're right. Yet again, you've used that against me. He's a... He's an aggressive, shouty person. If I can't hear myself, I don't know what I'm saying. Okay? So let's talk about this one. 
He has constantly, throughout the paperwork that I have got with regards to the youngest boy, said that he misses his dad. He has constantly said um, that he's missing me. On the 3rd of the 2nd, that's this year, yes, it, I'm not going to go through all of it, I'm just going to read parts of what he said. Yes, but I like the old house. I like daddy. Now, I'm not going to make it up, right? I'm not going to make it up. They've, they've continued to ask him questions, right, on this, on several occasions, okay? And on every occasion that they've spoken to a boy of four and five that I brought up while she was working, I took to nursery, I changed his bum and all the rest of it. I was the sole main carer of those children, despite what anybody says. And Kaf Kaf put that down. And that's why the social service has got Kaf Kaf out of the way. Because the Kaf Kaf, Kaf statement was factual and truthful. Nothing got mentioned about this. And he then says, whenever he's asked anything, right, you have to ask mummy. Why would he say that? You have to ask mummy. Okay. That's him. There's one more thing I'm going to discuss about him. Harry was very unhappy yesterday. Packed his bag. This is what he's done at school, by the way. He'd drawn a picture and he'd asked him what had happened. And they write everything down. And this is the school that's on her side. Harry was very unhappy. Packed his bags and put on his coat and wanted to go to his old house here he then colored himself completely red because he was angry so he wrote he, he told the teacher he wanted to go back to his old house he's missing his daddy and he's colored all his face in red because he was angry now that was done um, at the end of last year before court and that's what he'd said when they spoke to him he declined to comment when the social services asked him for a comment, that he declined. He said no, and run back to his mum. But she was in the room when they was talking to him. Why did you not talk to him at school? Why did you not talk to him at school in front of a teacher or somebody who was trained to deal with this? Why did you not do that? Why did you do it in front of his mum? Right? And you know he's going to run back to his mum and not say anything about it, because she's in the room, same as he would with me. That's how kids work, children work. No. So I'm not going to talk any more about him. I'm then going to go on to the oldest boy of that relationship. I have got three older ones that's older and an older girl. Class Dojo. The, well, you've been on lockdown, you've been on Class Dojo and you've been working from home. He had commented under a Class Dojo, okay? And he had put a dirty comment that could only have been, and this was this year. This was after. I'd, you know, this is after I'd been, I'd seen him through a little bit through Christmas and beginning of January, and then it stopped over the iPad. Again, watch the videos. This is somebody who's had an order on her, right? Who had, oh, I'm not even going to go into that. This is about the children, I'm not going into that. He had put a comment on about women's parts, right? Now, I don't know where he's got this from, but what I've said from the start with the gentleman that she's having around her and all the rest of it, she lied about being in a relationship with this guy she'd moved in. There's a part on this statement where apparently he took his daughter around there and they, they were calling her their little sister. And it's just a mess, right? She'd met a bloke two months after splitting up with me and still sleeping with me. The month after she stopped sleeping with me, she's moved somebody else in. I'm not going to go into that. You watch the other videos. He'd commented about these, a vulgar word, and commented about that. That rhymes with hussy. Said that they were nice, nice hussy. I'm not going to use the actual words because it's disgraceful. And he'd put that on there. And to clear onto this class dojo, you have to put in a code. They got in touch with her, and it's it's like, no, I 100 percent believe him. Right? Now he has got problems, and he will lie. And it's just the way the way he is. Um, and then there was another incident on there where he lied for 45 minutes till the teachers got it out of him and he told the truth. Now, I would say that he probably did this. Uh, he is aware that about this YouTube channel. Um, he is accessing YouTube. I don't believe, you know, if he wants to watch that. But sure, surely, as a parent, she should have blocked channels if she doesn't want him watching this. She's noted that he's, you know, watching these. And I would just want to make a point of on this as well. 
at no point has YouTube taken any of my videos down. They've taken none of my videos down. They're legal, they're above board, and, I, and you know, etc. And the police have been and questioned me over them, and the police can't do anything about it. So I have taken several videos down last year, because yet again in um, September, no, at the beginning of September, I was, she said to me that I would be allowed to see the children if I removed the video. In fact, it wasn't. Yes, at the beginning of September, end of August, if I removed those videos, I removed it. And she still never let me see the children. So that's him. Now I want to talk about my girl. And I suggest that if anybody, it's all in black and white, okay? And anybody that knows me, you should be a fucking ashamed of yourself because you believe in the wrong person on this one. And you won't believe, you still won't believe me. Get yourself to my ass and fucking read it if you've got the balls, right? Because I am distressed not only with this, but with the shameful and family members that I have. I am ashamed of each and every one of you that you have not. This is truth. This is what the children have gone into school and told their teachers and they have logged down. They've not lied about anything. This school is not, I will give them the due. This is, they've honoured this. They've been respectful with this. And they've been very professional with all this, right? I'd like to read this. Anybody who knows me will know this one is. This is my, this, this is my Irish lady. This is, this is my little girl who was a gift from God. And she was born on St. Patrick's Day. And I couldn't wish for her any better, a greater, to have my first daughter born on St. Patrick's Day. I'm going to just mention this part before I mention what she has said. I don't, I'm not going to name her. She's been very emotional at school and she's been breaking down. And they're very concerned about her because she's missing her dad. She's said that on several occasions on here. Her mother at the school gate has stopped a teacher and said to the teacher, can you please stop talking to, to the two? Can you stop taking her out of class and talk to her? We don't, we think it's distressing her. She's told the school to stop talking to her because she, my daughter, is telling the school the truth. So she doesn't want, she doesn't want the school to know the truth. So she's asked the school to stop, but the school didn't stop. They had to carry on going. They had a duty of care to my daughter. God bless you for that. It's about the only goddamn thing you've done that's true. She was upset. She was walking through the corridor and she was stopped by a teacher. And she was asked what was wrong with her. And she had said, I'm going to get emotional, I'm sorry. She had said that she's missing her dad. Okay. And she's been told that she's got to make a decision whether she wants to see him or not. Really? If she's missing her dad, then surely she wants to see her dad. But she's been told that she's got to make a decision. Okay. Her mum had said to her, this is the same, this is the same paragraph. I'm reading bits out of it. Mum has said if anyone asks about her, that Lola is to say, speak to mum. The same pattern. Any of the children get approached by anybody and ask them if what's going on or want to know anything, she says, You have to speak to mum. Brainwashing. Absolutely brainwashing. Okay. They, they believe that she's got the weight of the world on her shoulders. And she's undecided whether or not what to do. She, I mean, if she says she wants to see me, she's going against her mum. And she's living with her mum. And this is the position that they're putting these children in. So it goes on to say that she, she, she's, she's distraught because she, she doesn't know whether or not to say that she wants to see her dad and upset her mum, basically. That's basically, that gives you a summary of that. She was asked to draw a picture because um, basically she was in, um, she, she discussing birthday parties. This is an emotional child. This is a child that's less than 10, by the way. I think she's eight or nine now. And I just want to sort of read this bit to you. She drew a box and drew a house with a gate. With the road leading up to the gate, 
That's our street, by the way. That's my street. That's why I put the gates on for her. She drew a house with, with, with a gate, with a road leading up to the gate. She said, Daddy is there with his girlfriend, Kathy. Well, she never called her Kathy. She called her Kath. I don't understand why she called her Kathy. I can't draw his car because I, I have not seen it. Um, so she drew the front of my house on a piece of paper with the gates that I put up after she'd left and I made, I welded all the gates up and put roses on for my kids. Uh, if you go out to my gates, there's four roses on my gates for my children, my four that would here, that would live here, not my other three. Um, and we've started to build a wall and she was going to, she was moving the bricks. She got involved. She likes to get involved. She spent all the time with me. She spent all the time, I mean, she wants to build the wall. The wall's not been built. I've been holding on and holding on for the right weather and ready to build the wall. Okay? <laughs> she constantly kept going on about the gates. She kept going on about the gates. This is a young kid. I'm not going to keep going it, but she kept drawing the gate. She kept asking to draw different things. I don't know what the, what the, somebody out there, uh, I've got a doctor that's following me in America. Maybe you could message me, a psychological doctor in America. Maybe you could have messaged me and you can draw some conclusion that why is she drawing the house and why she won't draw my car because she doesn't see it. I've put that on tonight. Hopefully she'll see that I've got a new car. Well, I'm getting rid of that next month. I mean, I'm going to put one of the other ones on the road. But, um, so that's that. She kept constantly drawing the front of the house. I'm reading through. I don't want to sort of miss. I don't. I don't. I don't. So that's that one. I'm not going to carry on with that one. On Friday afternoon, we completed a fingerprint activity for Mental Health Week. She wrote. This is what she's done. She's put fingerprints in paint and put them on paper for mental health week. The school should be ashamed of themselves promoting that because they've made my life a fucking misery with my mental health. And then she wrote across the top, I miss my dad and put a sad face. This is a young girl. And this was done on the 7th this year. So she did a fingerprinting and she put on mental health week and she put, I am missing my dad and put a sad face. Again, the doctor in America, if you can message me and you draw some conclusions from this video, please, please message me and tell me. Lola, hang on, she's missing him and she said, because we just don't see him much or talk about him. No, because from what I've been told, you've told the kids a totally different story and you've, you've traumatised them. I want to read this bit and I'm going to cry. This is my daughter who I've not seen, who I believe is being brainwashed. I know she's being brainwashed. And she's put, when she came here um, and stayed out, I mean, my, my ex partner put on these court papers and on these school papers that she was worried about me seeing my children, right? She was worried about me seeing my children with regards to my mental health. We was in court at the beginning of Christmas. I had him over Christmas for a couple of one night stays and then a, tw a two night stay. So she was worried about what I was going to be like around my children, but she was quite happy for me to have them. All through my PTSD and my mental health, I brought those children up and yet she's never questioned anything. I'm hoping this video don't run out. If it does, I'll put a part two on because you really need to listen to this story. I'm sorry, I'm waffling. When we're at home, and she gets upset. I just curl up into a ball and cry in my bedroom. I just curl up into a ball and cry in my bedroom. When she gets upset. She curls him in a ball, goes to her bedroom and cries. And that's a young girl. I want to read you a story that she's wrote. I'll end with this. And this is an eight, nine-year-old child who's wrote a story, been asked to write a story at school. 
and I'm just going to read you parts of the story, what they put down on here. And this is about heaven. Only four people had been allowed to enter heaven. But everyone else is thrown away and sent to hell. So these are the people who sent into heaven. The people were John, Penny, Lenny and Smithhurst. Well, we all know who Smithhurst is. Stupid. But I had cheated their way, but had cheated their way into heaven. So she's named these four, but I mean, the school's blanked everything out, but they've not realised who these people are. So she's put here that these people have cheated their way into heaven. This is an eight year, or nine year old girl that's looking at the bigger picture. She's hovering over it and looking at what's happening. And I want you to concentrate on what I'm saying. She's named them four and she said that they have cheated their way into heaven. Is that cheated the way into the lives of them? I don't know. A doctor messaged me into heaven. To get into heaven, your heart needs to weigh less than a feather. This is an eight, nine year old girl. My family should be ashamed, you should be ashamed of yourself. And you should want to read this. And I hope this puts you in tears for what you've done to my fam to me and my kids, my children, what you've done. You should and I am upset. I'm fine, I'm not suicidal or anything, but you should be ashamed of yourself. Killed their dad. Mum was now in prison. So mum's killed me, I'm dead, and mum's in prison. During the storm, the lightning killed the older girl and the youngest boy. This is what she wrote about her family. This is what she wrote about me and her mum. Her mum's killed me and she's gone to jail. Her older sister and her younger brother have been struck by lightning and killed. Okay? And then, this is the most disturbing part about it. She's then put, the middle child, a girl, would now become a princess with the foster family. Read that. It's there in black and white, I'm not lying. It's a story that she's wrote about her family. Her mum has killed her dad and in jail, her dad's dead. Four people have come into her life and cheated the way into heaven. Her, her older sister and her younger brother have been struck by lightning and killed. She is now a princess and in a foster family. And several parts of this, she's been told that she's been adopted. She believes, I'm, this is going to cut out, I know it's going to cut out. She believes that she's been adopted. Because she's been told by her brothers and other family members that she's been adopted. And this is the sort of play that the family, the other family, her mother's family, have done to her. Have taken away from me, lied in court, right? And I hope you're watching these videos. I've got all this proof. I'll put it through your fucking door. They've lied in court. And this is the stories that she's writing at school. She's writing stories, right? And I am emotional. I've got a right to be emotional. It doesn't mean the police can bang on my door in the morning and try and smash my door out because I'm suicidal again, because I'm not. I'm mad. I'm upset. Because this young girl is going to end up with issues created by my family, her family, her mother, and everybody around her. One in four have suffered from mental health issues. And I'm being discriminated, discriminated against for my mental health issues. And yet you're doing it to two of the children that's involved in this. Two. One's having counselling. This one's been told to be kept her eye on. Their own mother's telling the school not to talk to her. She's walking around school with a care monster. She's chewing her sleeves. Right? These are all signs of a traumatised child that wants to see her father. She's drawing her father's house. She's drawing her father's gates that she was involved in, what she took part in, what she wanted to create the front of our house as a, as a, a focus when people come down the street. How people talk about my ass, they come down the street and go, oh, oh, you know, what, everybody looks at my ass and my gates and my walls and stuff, right? And she's writing stories about her family and she's killing them all off.
তো সেটা 